We can start off with Dr. Bernstein. It would be great to get your impression of what you're seeing in IBD patients. I mean, that number that came up in the poll kind of shocked me. I didn't expect, uh, you know, I expected a good number of people to be struggling with new mental health issues, but I didn't expect the number to be 75%. So what are your thoughts? Are you seeing that in your practice? Are you seeing that in your patients? Yeah, um, quite frankly, I've had the discussion with probably 90% of my patients. 90% of my patients have been phone discussions or maybe even more. And I, I've still had very full clinics. And everybody wants to discuss um, whether they view it as their anxiety, whether they would actually report on a survey that they're actively anxious about it. Everyone's anxious about it. They're anxious about um, <clears throat> that they're taking medications and does that matter? And they're anxious about that they have a disease even if they're on little to no treatment, does that matter? And they're very anxious about should they be in a workplace and especially if they're in the group that's on medications. And that's been a discussion I've probably had with 90% of the patients I've spoken to, even patients who are very well, they just want to talk about it, and I think it's that we as uh, healthcare professionals can do for patients is to facilitate that conversation. And you know, Leslie and I, and one of our dear uh, beloved uh, friends and mentors to both of us, John Walker, who was a big part of our group until he passed away last year, um, would um, you know often talk about um, the importance of just um, getting it out there and talking about what's just hanging in the air. It's, it's hanging in the air for all of us. We, if we don't have IBD, we're anxious about this. So um, I think what we've learned from a number of uh, web-based studies that we've done and survey studies that we've done is that as much as patients like and people like to use the web, they're still the strong, the almost number one res response on surveys is they want their healthcare professional, their physician, or if they use a nurse practitioner, they want to hear from them what they think, and they want that reassurance. So everyone out there, uh, if, uh, if you're a patient or a concerned friend or parent, um, have that conversation about exactly what your concerns are, because I can assure you that your physicians already had that conversation hundred times already. Mm -hmm. and I, I should say, can I just say one other thing, Eric? Um, one thing I would tell uh, patients and parents and people out there to get involved with is one of the things, the remarkable things we've seen in this COVID epidemic around the world, but including in Canada and especially in Canada, because I think we as Canadians are really good at this. People are getting involved in helping other people. So they're delivering meals and they're um, they're just doing a lot of incredible things um, to help their fellow human, and they're going to shelters where they wouldn't have gone to shelters before, but even just their older friends and neighbors, they're, they're getting them groceries, they're getting them food. Another way to be useful and feel that you're turning this into a positive is to participate in research. If you're an IBD patient and um, different people like the or people on the screen right now are, are calling with a with an email or a survey. Um, there's a lot of satisfaction in knowing that you've helped to expand the knowledge, the knowledge that Leslie just translated to us. Um, it's got to come from somewhere. So participate. There, there's a wonderful national study that the four of us are involved with, and Crohn's and Colitis Canada has been a big supporter of, called Imagine. And uh, in that, imagine long before COVID, it's been uh, ongoing for a few years. It involves about 10 centers in the country and possibly up to 15. It's being led by Paul Moyetti and Ida Fernandez out of McMaster, um, but we're all involved. Um, and we were interested in having studies to understand mental health and its relationship to IBD and IBS and diet and the gut microbiome. So that's ongoing. Contact your local major IBD center, and I'm sure that you can uh, participate. And you'll feel like you're, especially now, I think there'll be other questions that we're all going to have. So I'll stop. Now, it's something you said earlier. You said about, you know, talk to us, talk to somebody. Uh, one of the first questions we got from the audience, and we are taking a few questions from the audience at this point if people want to put some questions in, but one of the first questions we got from the audience was from somebody struggling with anxiety 
uh, and asking who to talk to. Should they go to their family doctor? Should they go to their gastroenterologist? Who should they speak with about this? Well, I'll take that first, and then, of course, I'll pass it to Leslie because she's the one on my speed dial um, when I'm struggling with this. And, of course, Leslie and I have been working together for over 25 years, and we overwhelmed her with uh, a gastroenterology-related uh, practice. There's just not enough mental health resources around. I think that you should speak to whoever you can access or trust the most. It's true that some people feel they get kind of short shrift from their family doctor at times and may not feel the confidence to discuss certain issues with them. They may feel they get short shrift from their gastroenterologist who's counting the number of bowel movements they have and do they have bleeding and then they sort of never stop to say, how are you doing otherwise? On the other hand, if your gastroenterologist is somebody who you really have a deep relationship with because you really hashed out the complexity of which biologic to start and your gastroenterologist has seen you, you know, potentially at your worst if you've got IBD, you've been sick, you've been coming out of surgery, you may feel that you trust him or her the most to have the conversation. And especially if a lot of your anxiety is about IBD and your IBD medications, um, you know, many of us have been on these, you know, international and national calls and, and, and webinars discussing what the issues are. So we really have, a, I think, a common thing to, to discuss. The, the other question, and Leslie, I'll, I'll put it over to you about people really have anxiety or depression and they really do need help and they really want a, a healthcare professional. They, they, they really want to go beyond a web because they're those people that want to see a real human and talk to them and they, they want to get met, uh, information beyond reading on a website what could be good or bad. What would you have to do? Well, I mean, often, as, as you said, starting with your family doctor, your gastroenterologist, um, because they can sometimes be the link into some of the other mental health resources. Um, mo you know, most often hospitals will have outpatient departments with psychiatry or psychology. Um, there are, I do know that provincial governments and the federal government are um, paying attention to the fact that there are increasing mental health needs throughout this pandemic, people who weren't anxious before are getting anxious now. And so, I, you know, each province is a little bit different with how they've responded to that, but many of the provinces have looked at ways to um, increase those supports. Uh, people's employee assistant program, if they're working, they often have an employee assistant program through work that connects them to uh, counselors who may be able to help work through that or have extended health benefits that help them to link with, let's say, a psychologist in the community. Um, so those can be some aspects as well. Uh, Canadian Mental Health Association, an organization called Anxiety Canada, um, while they don't necessarily have counselors per se, they often have in their local chapters, um, they've often got kind of mental health resource um, guides that also help you to find your way to some individuals who may be able to help you. Um, some of the provinces are doing more with what are called online mental health therapies. And while that can help you to work through some of the tools that you might use, um, there's, there's something pretty important about talking with a person. Um, and even starting, as uh, Charles was saying, starting with a trusted family member or friend, because sometimes just being able to say out loud what you're struggling with and what you're concerned about and having that, that uh, you know, response back and sometimes even that problem solving back can go a long way. But sometimes it's more serious than that, more, more um, you know, clinically getting stuck than that. And so it may need as a medication tool, it may, may need some medication or it may need some of the um, sort of talking therapy tools that can be helpful.